Hare Krishna, <clears throat> my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel, where we've established a little uh, haven, a little outpost for the BBT, and we have some really good news. The CC audiobook is now released, and it's on the BBT media.com and it will very soon be on Audible and iTunes. It's already been, dis, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's already been given to the aggregate company, it's called a ACX, which distributes to iTunes and Audible and Apple Tunes. Um, I mean, iTunes is Apple Tunes, sorry, and Amazon and all the biggies. And they've already accepted the protocol. Uh, the Audible has, the, the, has already accepted the protocol for the Adi Lila. So it looks like it's all going forward. So thanks to all the uh, hardworking, dedicated devotees in the North European BBT, it's now out. And I'm sure that Vaishishika Prabhu is now in transit from Vrindavan to, uh, to California. And he'll be uh, working on the promotion of it, you know, to promote it and get the word out to everybody. So this is a very auspicious day for me and Rasika Shiramani especially because we, we've been working for a couple of years on this book. And uh, it's just very ecstatic to know that it's out there now. We pray that you can all get it and share it and uh, tell others because this Chaitanya Charitamrita is very uh, timely. Just before Gopranima, it's come out and uh, yes. Okay, <clears throat> meanwhile we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam and we're going to recite first the Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatan Goswami, which glorifies the Bhagavatam for what it actually is. It goes like this Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kali Dvandurita Aditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Sharayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin, madguro man mahadana, man nistadaka mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin, Atini chochata kada, hana munchagada chin mam, prem na ret ganda yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me, always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate 
Vasudevaya. Okay, we reached the last chap last, last chapter, chapter 19 of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the appearance of Shukadev Goswami, the culmination of the first canto. We're starting with text 24. Maharaj Prikshit has decided to fast to death in response to the curse, and all the great sages and rishis from around the universe have come to be with him at this time. And he's inquiring from them. Text 24. O trustworthy brahmanas, I now ask you about my immediate duty. Please, after proper, proper deliberation, tell me of the un unalloyed duty of everyone in all circumstances and specifically of those who are just about to die. Purport. In this verse, the king has placed two questions before the learned sages. The first question is what is the duty of everyone in all circumstances? And the second question is what is the specific duty of one who is to die very shortly. Out of the two, the question relating to the dying man is most important because everyone is a dying man, either very shortly or after 100 years. The duration of life is immaterial, <clears throat> but the duty of a dying man is very important. Maharaj Prikshit placed these two questions before Shukadev Goswami, also on his arrival, and practically the whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam, from the beginning of the second canto up to the end of the twelfth canto, deals with these two questions. The conclusion arrived at thereof is that devotional service of the Lord, Sri Krishna, <clears throat> The conclusion arrived at thereof is that devotional service of the Lord Sri Krishna, as it is confirmed by the Lord Himself in the last phases of the Bhagavad Gita, is the last word in relation to everyone's permanent duty in life. Maharaj Prikshit was already aware of this fact, but he wanted the great sages assembled there to unanimously give their verdict on his conviction so that he might be able to go on with his confirmed duty without controversy among the sages. He, he has especially mentioned the word shuddha or perfectly correct. For transcendental realization or self-realization many processes are recommended by various classes of philosophers. Some of these methods are first class, some of them are second or third class. The first class method demands that one give up all other methods <clears throat> and surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord and thus be saved from all sins and their reactions. Text 25 At that moment, there appeared the powerful son of Vyasadeva, who, travel, who traveled over the earth disinterested, satisfied with his own achievements. He did not manifest any symptoms of belonging to any social order or status of life. He was surrounded by women and children and was dressed as if others had neglected him. Purport. The word Bhagavan is sometimes used in relation with some of the great devotees of the Lord, like Shukadev Goswami. Such liberated souls are disinterested in the affairs of this material world because they are self-satisfied by the great achievements of devotional service. 
As explained before, Shukadeva Goswami never accepted any former formal spiritual master, nor did he undergo any formal reformatory performances. His father, Vyasadeva, was his natural spiritual master because Shukadeva Goswami heard Srimad Bhagavatam from him. After this, he became completely self-satisfied. Thus, he was not dependent on any formal process. The formal processes are necessary for those who are expected to reach the stage of complete liberation. But Sri Shukadeva Goswami was already in that status by the grace of his father. As a young boy, he was expected to be properly dressed, but he went about naked and was uninterested in social customs. He was neglected by the general populace and inquisitive boys and women surrounded him as if he were a madman. He thus appeared on the scene while traveling on the earth of his own accord. It appears that upon the inquiry of Maharaj Pariksit, the great sages were not unanimous in their decision as to what was to be done. For spiritual salvation, there were many prescriptions according to the different modes of different persons. But the ultimate aim of life is to attain the highest perfectional stage of devotional service to the Lord. As doctors differ, so also sages differ in their different prescriptions. While such things were going on, the great and powerful son of Vyasadeva appeared on the scene. Text 26. This son of Vyasadeva was only 16 years old. His legs, hands, thighs, arms, shoulders, forehead, and other parts of his body were all delicately formed. His eyes were beautifully wide, and his nose and ears were highly raised. He had a very attractive face, and his neck was well formed and beautiful like a conch shell. PURPORT A respectable personality, as described beginning with the legs, and this honored system is observed here with Shukadeva Goswami. He was only 16 years of age. A person is honored for his achievements and not for advanced age. A person can be older by experience and not by age. Sri Shukadeva Goswami, <clears throat> who is described herein as the son of Vyasadev, was by his knowledge more experienced than all the sages present there, although he was only 16 years old. Text 27 <clears throat> His collarbone was fleshy, his chest broad and thick, his navel deep, and his abdomen beautifully striped. His arms were long, and curly hair was strewn all over his beautiful face. He was naked, and the hue of his body reflected that of Lord Krishna. PURPORT His bodily features indicate him to be different from common men. All the signs described in connection with the bodily features of Shukadeva Goswami are uncommon symptoms, typical of great personalities, according to physiognomical, physiognomical calculations. Physiognomical calculations. His body, his bodily hue resembled that of Lord Krishna, who is the supreme among the gods, demigods, and all living beings. Text 28 He was blackish and was very beautiful due to his youth. Because of, because of the glamour of his body and his attractive smiles, he was pleasing to women. Though he tried to cover 
his natural glories. The great sages present there were all expert in, this, in the art of physiognomy. Physiognomy. Yes, got it right. Though he tried to cover his natural glories, the great sages present there were all expert in the art of physiognomy. And so they honored him by, by, by rising from their seats. Text 29. Maharaj Prikshit, who was also known as Vishnu Rata, one who was always protected by Vishnu, bowed his head to receive the chief guest, Shukadev Goswami. At that time, all the ignorant women and boys ceased following Srila Shukadev. Receiving respect from all, Shukadev Goswami took his exalted seat. This is so dramatic, so wonderful, so powerful. Purport On Shukadev Goswami's arrival at the meeting, everyone except Srila Vyasadev, Narada and a few others stood up and Maharaj Pariksit, who was glad to receive a great devotee of the Lord, bowed down before him with all the limbs of his body. Shukadev Goswami also exchanged the greetings of reception by embrace, shaking of hands, nodding and bowing down, especially before his father and Narada Muni. Thus he was offered the presidential seat at the meeting. When he was so received by the king and, the sa and sages, the street boys and less intelligent women who followed him were struck with wonder and fear. So they retired from their frivolous activities and everything was full of gravity and calm. Text 30 Shukadev Goswami was then surrounded by saintly sages, demigods, and kings. Just as the moon is surrounded by stars, planets, and other heavenly bodies. His presence was gorgeous, and he was respected by all. Purport In the great assembly of saintly personalities, <clears throat> there was Vyasadev, the Brahmarshi, Narada, the Devarshi, Parashuram, the great ruler of the Chatriya kings, and so on. Some of them were powerful incarnations of the Lord. Shukadev Goswami was not known as a Brahmarshi, Rajarshi, or Devarshi, nor was he an incarnation like Narada, Vyas, or Parashuram, and yet he excelled them in respects paid. This means that the devotee of the Lord is more honored in the world than the Lord Himself. One should not therefore one should therefore never minimize the importance of a devotee like Shukadev Goswami. Text thirty one. The sage Sri Shukadev Goswami sat perfectly pacified possessed of the intelligence necessary to answer any question without hesitation. The great devotee Maharaj Parikshit approached him, again offered his respects by bowing before him, and politely inquired with sweet words and folded hands. Purport The gesture now adopted by Maharaj Parikshit of questioning a master is quite befitting in terms of scriptural injunctions. The scriptural injunction is that one should humbly approach a spiritual master to understand the transcendental science. Maharaj Parikshit was now prepared for meeting his death and within the very short time of seven days he was to know the process of entering the kingdom of God. In such important cases one is required to approach a spiritual master. There is no necessity of approaching a spiritual master unless one is in need of solving the problems of life. One who does not know 
how to put questions before the spiritual master has no business seeing him. And the qualification of the spiritual master is perfectly manifested in the person of Shukadeva Goswami. Both the spiritual master and the disciple, namely Sri Shukadeva Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit, attained perfection through the medium of Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadeva Goswami learned Srimad Bhagavatam from his father, Vyasadev, but he had no chance to recite it. Before Maharaj Parikshit, he recited Srimad Bhagavatam and answered the questions of Maharaj Parikshit un unhesitatingly, and thus both the Master and the disciple got salvation. Text 32. The fortunate king <clears throat> Prikshit said, O Brahmana, by your mercy only you have sanctified us, making us like undo making us like unto places of pilgrimage, all by your presence here as my guest. By your mercy, we who are but unworthy royalty have become eligible to serve the devotee. Purport. Saintly devotees like Shukadeva Goswami <clears throat> generally do not approach worldly enjoyers, especially those in royal orders. Maharaj Prachaparudra was a follower of Lord Chaitanya, but when he wanted to see the Lord, the Lord refused to see him because he was a king. For a devotee who desires to go back to Godhead, Two things are strictly prohibited, worldly enjoyers and women. Therefore, devotees of the standard of Shukadeva Goswami are never interested in seeing kings. Maharaj Parikshit was, of course, a different case. He was a great devotee, although a king, and therefore Shukadeva Goswami came to see him in his last stage of life. Maharaj Parikshit, out of his devotional humility, felt himself an unworthy descendant of his great Chatriya forefathers, although he was as great as his predecessors. The unworthy sons of the royal orders are called Chatra Bandavas, as the unworthy of sons of the Brahmanas are called Dwijabandus or Brahmabandhus. Maharaj Parikshit was greatly encouraged by the presence of Shukadeva Goswami. He felt himself sanctified by the presence of the great saint whose presence turns any place into a place of pilgrimage. Text 33 Simply by our, simply by our remembering you, our houses become instantly sanctified. And what to speak of seeing you, touching you, washing your holy feet, and offering you a seat in our home? Purport The importance of holy places of pilgrimage is due to the presence of great sages and saints. It is said that sinful persons go to the holy places and leave their sins there to accumulate. But the presence of the great saints disinfects the accumulated sins and thus the holy places continue to remain sanctified by the grace of the devotees and saints present there. If such saints appear in the homes of worldly people, certainly the accumulated sins of such worldly enjoyers become neutralized. Therefore, the holy saints actually have no self-interest with the householders. The only aim of such saints is to sanctify the houses of the householders, and the householders, therefore, should feel grateful when such saints and sages appear at their doors. A householder who dishonors such holy orders 
is a great offender. It is enjoined, therefore, that a householder who does not bow down before a saint at once must undergo fasting for the day in order to neutralize the great offense. Text 34 Just as an atheist cannot remain in the presence of the Personality of Godhead, so also the invulnerable sins of a man are immediately vanquished in your presence, O saint, O great mystic. Purport There are two classes of human beings, namely the atheist and the devotee of the Lord. The devotee of the Lord, because of manifesting godly qualities, is called a demigod, whereas the atheist is called a demon. The demon cannot stand in the presence of Vishnu, the Personality of Godhead. The demons are always busy trying to vanquish the Personality of Godhead, but factually, as soon as the Personality of Godhead appears by either his transcendental name, form, attributes, pastimes, paraphernalia, or variegatedness, the demon is at once vanquished. It is said that a ghost cannot remain as soon as the holy name of the Lord is chanted. The great saints and devotees of the Lord are in the list of his paraphernalia, and thus as soon as a saintly devotee is present, the ghostly sins are at once vanquished. That is the verdict of all Vedic literatures. <clears throat> One is recommended, therefore, to associate only with saintly devotees so that worldly demons and ghosts cannot exert their sinful influence. Text 35 Lord Krishna, the Personality of Godhead, who is very dear to the sons of King Pandu, has accepted me as one of those relatives just to please his great cousin brothers. PURPORT A pure and exclusive devotee of the Lord serves his family interest more dexterously than others who are attached to illusory family affairs. Generally, people who are attached to family matters and the whole economic impetus of human society is moving under the influence of family affection. Such deluded persons have no information that one can render better service to the family by becoming a devotee of the Lord. The Lord gives special protection to the family members and descendants of a devotee, even though such members are themselves non-devotees. Maharaj Prahlad was a great devotee of the Lord, but his father, Hiranyakashipu, was a great atheist and declared enemy of the Lord. But despite all this, Hiranyakashipu was awarded salvation due to his being the father of Maharaj Prahlad. The Lord is so kind that he gives all protection to the family members of his devotee, and thus, the devotee has no need to bother about his family members, even if one leaves such family members aside to discharge devotional service. Maharaj Yudhishthir and his brothers were the sons of Kunti, the paternal aunt of Lord Krishna. And Maharaj Parikshit admits the patronage of Lord Krishna because of his being the only grandson of the great Pandavas. Text 36. Otherwise, without being inspired by Lord Krishna, how is it that you have voluntarily appeared here, though you were moving in incognito to the common man and are not visible to us who are on the verge of death? Purport. The great sage, Shukadev Goswami, was certainly inspired by Lord Krishna to appear voluntarily before Maharaj Prikshit, the great devotee of the Lord, 
just to give him the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. One can achieve the nucleus of the devotional service of the Lord by the mercy of the spiritual master and the personality of Godhead. The spiritual master is the manifested representative of the Lord to help one achieve ultimate success. One who is not authorized by the Lord cannot become a spiritual master. Srila Shukadev Goswami is an authorized spiritual master and thus he was inspired by the Lord to appear before Maharaj Prikshit and instruct him in the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. One can achieve the ultimate success of going back to Godhead if he is favored by the Lord's sending him his true representative. As soon as a true representative of the Lord is met by a devotee of the Lord, the devotee is assured a guarantee for going back to Godhead just after leaving the present body. This, however, depends on the sincerity of the devotee himself. The Lord is seated in the heart of all living beings and thus he knows very well the movements of all individual persons. As soon as the Lord finds that a particular soul is very eager to go back to Godhead, the Lord at once sends his bona fide representative. The sincere devotee is thus assured by the Lord of going back to Godhead. The conclusion is that to get the assistance and help of a bona fide spiritual master means to receive the direct help of the Lord Himself. Text 37 You are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons and especially for one who is about to die. Purport Unless one is perfectly anxious to inquire about the way of perfection, there is no necessity of approaching a spiritual master. A spiritual master is not a kind of decoration for a householder. Generally, a fashionable materialist engages a so-called spiritual master without any profit. The pseudo-spiritual master flatters the so-called disciple and thereby both the master and his ward go to hell without a doubt. Maharaj Pariksit is the right type of disciple because he puts forward questions vital to the interest of all men, particularly for the dying men. The question put forward by Maharaj Pariksit is the basic principle of the complete thesis of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, let us see how intelligently the great master replies. Text 38 Please, let me know what a man should hear, chant, remember, and worship, and also what he should not do. Please explain all this to me. Text 39 Nunam Bhagavato Brahman Griheshu Grihamedinam Nalakshate Yavastanam Apigo Dohanam Pochit O powerful Brahmana, it is said that you hardly stay in the houses of men long enough for a cow to be milked. Purport Saints and sages in the renounced order of life Saints and sages in the renounced order of life go to the houses of the householders at the time they milk the cows early in the morning and ask some quantity of milk for subsistence. A pound of milk fresh from the milk bag of a cow is sufficient to feed an adult with all vitamin values and therefore saints and sages live only on milk. Even the poorest of the householders 
keep at least 10 cows, each delivering 12 to 20 quarts of milk, and therefore no one hesitates to spare a few pounds of milk for the mendicants. It is the duty of householders to maintain the saints and sages as they maintain their children. It is the duty of householders to maintain the saints and sages as they maintain their children. So a saint like Shukadev Goswami would hardly stay at the house of a householder for more than five minutes in the morning. In other words, such saints are very real, rarely seen in the houses of householders. And Maharaj Pariksit therefore prayed to him to instruct him as soon as possible. The householders also should be intelligent enough to get some transcendental information from visiting sages. The householder should not foolishly ask a saint to deliver what is available in the market. That should be the reciprocal relation between the saints and the householders. Text 40 Shri Sutta Goswami said, The king thus spoke and questioned the sage, using sweet language. Then the great and powerful personality, <clears throat> the son of Vyasadeva, who knew the principles of religion, began his reply. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto, 19th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled The Appearance of Shukadeva Goswami, completed in three volumes on February 20th, 1965, the Vyasa Puja Day. End of the first canto. All glories to Srila Prabhupada for commenting. All glories to Srila Vyasadeva for giving the verses. All glories to Sutta Goswami for repeating the verses as well as Shukadeva Goswami, Shukadev Goswami. And all glories to all the sages and sages, especially Maharaj Pariksit, who was intelligent enough to inquire, to, to bring the Srimad Bhagavatam into human society for the deliverance of the world. Hare Krishna. Well, so that was nice timing. We finished the first canto today and it's 7.55 in the afternoon. Wednesday, 9th March, 2022. Hare Krishna. And today, the audiobook files were sent to the bbtmedia.com site and you can now download it if you like right from that site and it's also been accepted and the protocols of the Adi Lila have already gone through and so therefore we expect within just a few days the audiobook will be on Audible iTunes, Apple iTunes uh, Amazon and uh, at least those three. Very auspicious day. Satisfying day. Hare Krishna. And before we forget, this reading is dedicated to the devotees, uh, the ISKCON devotees in Ukraine who are sheltered, as far as I know still, uh, and suffering terrible inconvenience that we can't even imagine uh, and also the people of Ukraine who are being uh, scourged uh, by an invasion of an independent country we know that it's a complicated political situation but no hum human being with values of morality and spirituality will do such a thing, attack the citizens of a country unprovocated. Unprov so we pray for their safety 
and their spiritual uh, success. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll start second canto tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Exciting. So, will the sages, the local sages in the cyberspace, please uh, step forward and give their uh, realizations and reflections to us, please? Hare Krishna. First is from Shantarupa Devi Dasi. Shantarupa Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. She says, Jai, audio books are the future. Yes, Congrats. and Vaishachika, my best friend, told me, and he's a, he's a visionary. He said, it's going to be the next big thing. <laughs> she said, congratulations. Thank you so much. It was a great relief to me, actually, to, to, be, to be honest. Great relief. We worked for two years on this book. Learned a lot. Hare Krishna. And from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, wonderful that Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita will be released for the benefit of the world. Yes. Wonderful timing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We were praying and praying that it would come out. But then when this whole, you know, war started, and, you know, the devotees who were working on it were in Russia. So we were very, uh, you know, we were very uh, anxious, you know, whether it's going to come out in time for Gaur Praneem. And Vaishachika Prabhu is in transit now from Vrindavan back to California. He should be in California before long. It's a long flight, direct flight from Delhi to uh, San Francisco, direct, that 16-hour flight. So he's somewhere in between. And uh, I don't know when his flight arrives, but uh, yeah, he'll be, I know him, he's my best friend and we're very close and he's very e eager to promote and communicate this to the world. Hare Krishna. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Bo Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj and all the... Assemble devotees, Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Ho Maharaj for the CC audiobook. Yes, thank you. And from Rai Kanu Devi Dasi. Yes, Rai Kanu Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Ho. Glories to Prabhupada. And from Christopher Kenzior. Christopher Kenzior. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. I am currently, I am traveling currently and just got to go see the Iskon Temple in Dublin, Ireland. Oh. It was amazing. I hope to get to visit the temple in London while I am here. Nice. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Yes. Have a safe journey. Be careful traveling. Be safe. And from Sudevi Dasi. Jai Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna, my dear God sister. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna to you. And from Bhakta Rupa. Jai Bhakta Rupa. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for reading. Just finished on the street with Ali and Alice. We are lucky enough to be on Travelling Sankirtan in Oxford. We distributed two trolleys full of books. We are a little bit intoxicated. <laughs> Hare Bol. Good for you. We also distributed around 20 Srimad Bhagavatam second cantos. Ready for your coming readings, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Very good. 
Thank you so much. The success, that, that intoxication is real intoxication. When you get high from distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, that means you're getting the attention of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. You're getting their mercy and Srila Prabhupada's mercy. Congratulations. From Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Yes, Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's reading and thank you so much for allowing me to be here. This transcendental message. You know, hearing this transcendental message with you all, which is coming down from Shukadeva Goswami Maharaj. So valuable hours every day. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Hare mm. Krishna. Thank you. Deep appreciation. Thank you so much. Nirati Manjari posted a link for the from BBT Media for the audiobook. <laughs> Good. And Christopher says, I'm very excited for the second canto. Oh, yes. And I'm glad you're excited for it. That's a good sign. When you become eager to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, that means you're on the way to perfection. And there's nothing quite like it, huh? Today, earlier, I gave a two-hour class in the Bhagavad Gita, kind of overview, and it was ecstatic. And this morning, we had our chad with uh, Abai Das Brahmachari and Rasika Das Brahm, uh, Shirmani Das Brahmachari and also uh, Braj Balaba from California. He always phones in and we, we hear a chapter of the Gita and then discuss among ourselves re re revelation, re re reflections and also you know, read some purports that particularly interest us in that day, in that chapter. And now here we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. This is life. This is real life. And we're getting just a tip, just a little glimpse of what was talking about today, how Shukadeva Goswami was disinterested. He was self-satisfied. He didn't need anything of the material world. And although we use things of the material world to broadcast uh, the Bhagavatam, and to, to do the audio book and to get it out. We use the facilities, technological facilities. Still, we're not interested in those things. We're interested in pleasing Krishna by broadcasting this transcendental sound. It is so nice and it is intoxicating. It is. Hare Krishna. Jagamohan Das. Hare, Hare Krishna Jagamohan. Jai Maharaj, all glories to Chaitanya Charitamrita audiobook. Excellent news. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And from Dayal Nithai. Hare Bol Dayal Nithai. He says, Congratulations, Sri the Guru Maharaj, and congratulations to the entire PBT Enclave crew in Hari. Mm. Well, thank you <clears throat> for that. All glories to your glorious bakery shop, which has become a uh, prasadam distribution center. Hare Krishna. Making all the local people, especially Krishna conscious. And from Rati Manjari. Hmm. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Congratulations to you and your able team for your steadfast service to Sri the Prabhupada and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the reading of tonight, I was happy to hear that Lord Krishna is also merciful to the family members of a devotee, even though they themselves may not be devotees. Yes, that's a wonderful point to bring out. Thank you. Very encouraging. Yes, very encouraging. It's the best 
thing that you can do to serve your family, to become a pure devotee. Because Krishna, as we heard, he's in the heart of everyone and he knows who's connected to who and who has been connected to who in the past and who will be connected to who in the future. And so he knows about all these connections and he gives special mercy to those who are connected in any way to a pure devotee of the Lord. Scientific. The science of self-realization. So, thank you so much. Very auspicious day. And tomorrow is another day. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Oh, we're missing something? Someone just came from Rati Maharaj. Okay, Rati, you, you, you squeezed in. Hare Krishna. And Garanga Gopal just put something else. In. Oh, good. Rati Manjari says, Would you please elaborate, if possible, on how it occurs that sins of people are eradicated in the presence of a pure devotee? It's like, it's the principle <coughs> of association. You know, when you're in a room with a whole bunch of people and a person comes in that is particularly uh, influential or particularly special, the atmosphere in the room changes. If there's a room full of women and one man enters the room, the atmosphere changes. If there's a room full of men and one woman enters the room, the atmosphere changes. It's the principle of uh, association. And in, in terms of the particular um, mention in, in the purports, in the verses, about how places of pilgrimage become purified by the, the, uh, the association of saints, it's the same principle. It's by the principle of association. Just like a fire, when, when you burn something that's dirty, you know, it becomes purified. So the sins uh, become burned by the association of one who is on fire uh, in, in pure devotional service. Sometimes it is said that the spiritual master uh, takes the uh, reactions of the disciples, and he does, but in the air of his devotional life is very, is burning very strongly, then those reactions become burned by that fire of devotional service. But if the spiritual master, the fire is not, depending on how bright that fire is, then he should take that many disciples. He shouldn't take too many disciples that he won't be able to digest uh, receiving those. And this is all done by the presence of the super soul. It's the super soul who does all these things because he's the only one who knows everything. He knows everything about us, past, present and future. And therefore he arranges all these things. He's actually in control of time and space and all the material elements and all the actions and reactions of material nature. Maya dyakshina prakriti suyate sachara charam hetunani nikonteya jigat jigat can't remember the last line. Anyway, it means that the Lord is in charge of the uh, maya, jakshena prakriti, the material nature. So that's how, that's the detail. It's the Lord who does it from, from within the hearts of all the conditioned souls. And the influence of a pure devotee, he, he, he creates the atmosphere of Vrindavan wherever he goes because He's always engaging and glorifying the Lord and setting up his living space in a way that the Lord's presence is uh, manifested, especially by hearing and chanting the Holy Scriptures and by constant thinking of the Lord. You know, when you go into a rock concert, you know, the atmosphere changes completely because of all the noise and the intoxicated people and 
and you, you just want to plug your ears and go away if you're a devotee, unless you're distributing books, of course. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Then you take advantage of their intoxication and give them as many books as possible. <laughs> Uh, Rathi Manjari says, Very nice explanation, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. The sins become burned by one who is on fire by devotional service. Awesome. And then from Goranga Gopal. Yes, Goranga Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I am so glad that I made this internal commitment to attend your daily readings. Now when evening comes, I am always very excited about tuning in and hearing you churn the nectar. I can't believe how dense with all valuable information is this first canto only. Mm. So what to speak about the other eleven cantos? Mm. Prabhupada really did the impossible by translating and commenting on the Srimad Bhagavatam, CC and so many others for us. Yes, it's the greatest gift that a person can give to human society. He did the most service anyone can do for human society. And Lord Chaitanya, because it was Lord Chaitanya who prophesied that it would go everywhere. And Prabhupada actually did it. No one else could do it. You can say, so, well, but so others can do it, but he did, they didn't do it. There's that famous story that Prabhupada told about uh, Columbus, and he was there in a kind of a state gathering of big people and one of the persons kind of was looking down on Columbus and he said what did he do? He just happened to run in to the, this piece of land and he was looking for something else and it was no, really not that big a deal. So the, the queen heard this and he gave the guy an egg and he said please stand this egg on its end for me. And he got there on the table and he put the egg and he held it very carefully and boom, it fell over. And he kept trying and trying and he kept pulling. And then he gave, she gave the egg to Columbus and he said, put the egg so it stands up on his head. And he took it and he went <coughs> on the table and put it up. And the, and the other guy said, that way, anybody could do that. He said, yeah, but he did it and you didn't. So when something can, somebody can do something that hasn't been done before, that's special. And Prabhupada gave Krishna consciousness to the whole world, literally, single-handedly. Therefore, he is our worshipable Lord, the supreme personality of servitor, Godhead. Hare Krishna. And as of now, the last comment from Jagamohan Das. Haribo Jagamohan. He says, Dear Maharaj, I love the fact that the Lord will send a spiritual master to all who are sincerely seeking in a humble mood. I'm so very grateful, too, for the association of the devotees. Jeev Jago. Jeev Jago. Thank you so much. And Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Gaur Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bol and see you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The beginning of the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. See you tomorrow. Hari Bol.